Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, our Let's Play series playing this early access game that is uh, currently available only through Game Lab's website, the developers of this game. Uh, we are returning to our Let's Play where we are playing as the Americans in this game, and I think we're in the last phase of the campaign. It's the 1775 campaign. The goal is to take Quebec and Montreal. I know they're working on expanding the campaign further, so I think like once you take Boston and you take Canada, or not, like once the time ends on here, the 180 days that we have left, I think what happens is that you just run out of runway on the on the early access version, and then the later updates will probably add, you know, New York and, and other campaigns areas later, because I believe the full version of the game will be the whole U.S., but right now uh, it's basically sort of the early campaign of, of the war. Uh, we have Benedict Arnold, who just fought a battle at Fort Frederick. It was a bit of a bloodbath, but uh, we were successful in our in our endeavors to eject the British from that fort. Um, the troops we lost were very concentrated, so we lost only 700 of about 3,500 men. Um, but of those losses, the vast majority came in a couple of regiments of regulars. So we've got the 6th Connecticut Regiment. Here you can see several of these units are well below 50% of their company strength. You've got the Morgan's Rifles. Actually, they didn't fight. That's a new unit. Um, but then you've also got the 2nd Connecticut here. Again, several units below 50%. And then you've got, you know, some of these other units where it's like, hey, look, they barely even were scratched. They, they still are almost at full strength or at least 80% of their strength there. Even the uh, one of the Continental Regular units here didn't, didn't engage very heavily either. To that point, I am actually going to do something. So uh, our commanding general, General Butcher, is at Hubberton, where there are 800 recruits waiting to be enlisted. And so all I need to do is I need to get some, some, some units there. I could raise a new regiment there, but that'll consume a whole bunch of officers, and I have regiments that need more men. So we're going to go ahead and send the 6th Connecticut, which is the most badly bloodied unit over there so go ahead and get them out of fort frederick and then we send them over to hubberton now it is a bit of a long march they got to go around lake george down here but they should be able to get to hubberton without too much difficulty in the meantime we are going to do a two-pronged offensive further north so i know like okay we're we're withdrawing troops from a, a key city right before a battle but burlington we saw we had some intelligence toward the end of the last episode I think there's only like a 70 man regiment there or it's something, something very small. So we'll send a regiment of uh, militia out that way. And then Benedict Arnold is going to send the remaining force of his about 2,900 men up to Fort St. John's where we saw, I believe there's about 1,100 British troops there. So we should still be able to outnumber them nearly two to one. And actually we'll go ahead and we'll send 450 militia north from Fort Ticonderoga to more than replace, at least in manpower terms, uh, the the regulars that were pulling back to re-equip. Um, and the nice thing is if they can get over here and, and sort of get to Hubberton, then perhaps by the time Fort St. John's and Burlington are resolved, they may be back up to full strength. And hopefully those additional four or 500 replacements are able to sort of re replace the majority of any losses we might have in an upcoming battle. That's sort of the strategy there. Um, with that being said, we do have a few units that could upgrade their weapons. Uh, these guys are still using civilians, and we've got we've got 450 U.S. muskets available to us. So we're actually going to go ahead and equip two of those units with that, and one with brown besses. So that'll be 300 modern weapons for that militia unit. We saw how much more efficient those weapons are in our previous fight, so getting everybody upgraded certainly is ideal. Uh, we currently have... We need more. We're going to need more low-ranking officers. We're also working on dragoons. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and research a navy department. I'm going to replace the dragoon research with a navy department for my chief, my commander in chief, so I can maybe do low-ranking officers in one of these other units. Also, meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and replace uh, or qualified engineers as a as a task here. So we start the work on low-ranking officers. So in about two weeks, we'll have some more research done. 
Meanwhile, you can see we've got about four grand in our bank right now, which is a decent amount of cash. I mean, it's certainly not nothing. Um, it'll, it can certainly go away really quickly, but we actually have a decent stockpile of furs, about three grand worth uh, and a couple hundred worth of textiles that we can turn around and sell. We also have a considerable chunk of copper we can turn around and sell. So we do have resources that we can sell to generate more cash. I'm going to wait on that. I just feel like anytime I get a ton of money, it all just evaporates. Um, and I don't know enough about the inner workings of the economy to know why. Um, but right now, the other thing is with moving north, one of the problems or challenges is that we also are currently in a situation where we do not have like any provisions anywhere. New Haven and uh, Fort Montgomery have a little bit, but like we've got nothing up here. Intelligence seems to think... Fort St. George, at least last I saw at the end of the last episode, had 14 provisions. So maybe this is a little bit of uh, of an effort to try and solve that. The other thing we could do is we can also order these units to, like, forage, right? I think we can... How do I do that? There, there's an option to forage uh, the, the territory that you're moving through. Now, I don't know that there's going to be any forage when it's still got snow on the ground... But we're almost to April. Things should start warming up soon. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get these guys moving. And I was going to do one other thing. Um, I'll at least get that regular unit out of the way before I start forming the army. And we'll get those militiamen north. But you can see food, food. Uh, oh, yeah, Butcher, you need to you need to go with the army, right? <laughs> get the army up that way. All right. I don't want them to get too far ahead of everybody else. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's pull the militia out of Fort Frederick. We'll form a brigade here. Okay, so we got a brigade of 1,100 men under Jackson. They're going to start moving north. And then we will have... Regulars form into a brigade. All but one of our regiments of regulars will form into a brigade. Now, moving with, with limited supply is, is definitely dicey again. So we do have an option for foraging, it looks like. I don't know that there is. So it's weird. When I select this brigade, I have no foraging option. But these boys do have foraging as an option. I wonder if it's due to unit type. Whoops. All right. These boys have formed up two. Okay. So Burlington has a hundred troops. And then we will form one last brigade. here and Benedict Arnold will also leave uh, we can confiscate rum in Rhode Island where everybody loves us already so I will take the free money I'm assuming that having like no provisions will also hurt our uh, combat effectiveness, but I haven't really noticed it be too bad. Can these guys forward? Can I not? I don't understand supplies moving toward regiment. Okay. I don't fully understand the, the unit is starving leads to lower morale. Yeah, of course. Starving troops, probably not happy. All right, so the enemy is actually moving considerable reinforcements south to Burlington. So perhaps we halt our advance there. Maybe there's nothing to forage, and that's why. Like, maybe it's an intermittent thing where when you have nothing to forage, you don't. 
you don't forage. As it is, it looks like, so it looks like Butcher moving this militia regiment up here actually does serve a purpose because Fort St. John's appears to have pulled 500 troops out of the garrison there down to support Burlington where, where I was sort of threatening. So that's, that's interesting. That's actually, I think, good. My troops are probably going to arrive exhausted, but I think we can solve that on the, on the battlefield. All right, so McNair, I think he'll just kind of hold back a little bit. Benedict Arnold, I don't want you getting too close. Yeah, so McLoyalist reinforcements. Faced with the threat of a continental invasion from the south, British officials in Canada issue a call for loyalists to join their ranks. In response, a significant number of loyalist volunteer and militia units rally to the British cause. 420, 20, 280, and 140. I'm assuming there's a 420 men arrive at one at location, 280 at another, and 140 at another, but it does bolster their, their manpower in Canada. Meanwhile, with McNair and Butcher threatening Burlington, they've got a battle about to start. So let's go. They've got three batteries of artillery. So I'm going to run into this bugaboo again where the enemy has artillery and I don't know how to fight it. But looks like they're staying within the fort. So maybe that's good news. I, I don't know. It's a level two fort. So it's not we're not attacking Fort Ticonderoga again. And we do outnumber the enemy like almost five to one. I think I didn't I didn't finish the math there, but I think we're at like twenty nine hundred and they're at six hundred. So. That's rough math there. You can see it's it's bad weather. My troops are probably arriving on the field exhausted. Yeah. Condition 12. Oh, victory. They're already retreating? Okay. So they retreated without firing a shot. I'm guessing that means they're evacuating that city. Which isn't great. Like, it would have been ideal to surround and destroy them. That would have been preferable, but I'm not going to chase him in a snowstorm when I have no conditioning anyway. So you can see they're retreating. Fort St. John's is going to be ours. Well, let's not chase too far. All the way to Montreal, boys! Right, so they got 600 men. Is Montreal unoccupied? Oh, shit, it was. I didn't expect that. But I could really use some food. Tell me they have provisions here. They don't. There's, there's no provisions. Fuck. Okay. Um, we're going to go, go to Fort... Chambly or however you pronounce that. What, what what can I do here? Let's. I want to drop some of these militia men off to garrison the fort. The goal is to take this fort because that will then, I believe, cut Burlington off. Actually, I think Burlington's already cut off. But. I want to prevent, so there's like a thousand men between Ramsey and Burlington, 600 at Chambly and 600 at Montreal. So between the three groups, they could raise 2,200 men, which would be a much bigger challenge than what I'm dealing with right now. Our boys are exhausted, which is not great. McNair's just sitting in the cold with no food. 
Still no provisions like anywhere here. I would have thought you could purchase provisions, which is one thing I'm a little confused about. Okay, I'm actually going to do this. We're going to send McNutt up to Montreal. So the enemy, I think, pulled the Montreal Regiment down to Chambly. So I'm going to send Arnold and Bush out to Chambly here to engage. What's going on here? Smuggler Warehouse? Yes, give me the gold. 186 Hunter's Rifles from the Craftsman's Guild. That's the weapons that Morgan's boys use. All right, we're going to fight here. Let's fight this battle. This will probably decide the fate of Montreal. Again, my boys are starving, so their morale is going to be low. But I don't like any time a battle triggers, I always try and fight it right away rather than let units get all concentrated because if they get concentrated, the enemy might rout you before you actually want to fight because they can rout you on the strategic map. As it is, this looks like a much more wooded terrain map. The British appear... this. One of the complaints I have with Ultimate Generals, they don't generally do a great job, especially Gettysburg does. But like Civil War, the territory generally feels pretty flat with the exception of maybe like some of the Gettysburg-specific scenarios. Um, but in any event, it like this looks to me like they're on an elevate, elevated hill. Elevated hill, that's, that's redundant. Um, but it... I don't know. I don't know that they are. It it looks like it to me. All right, can we do this? We can't merge them. We can merge these guys. Merge these guys. I'm assuming you're limited to to merging three units. But I do like mer the division trait. I think it is very useful. One, to concentrate, like, your regiments into fewer, more manageable units. I don't entirely know what the, how the logic works on it, though. But two, just because it's it makes your units, I think, much more efficient in terms of, like more dam I, I assume it influences damage per second when you've got multiple companies all merged together. Maybe there's a efficiency penalty. The only thing is it, it does make it harder to form your troops up early in the battle. That's that's the other reason you, you wait. Oh shit, we've already got a lieutenant killed. British are coming down it feels like they're coming down a hill toward us. But I will let them come to me for sure. Oh, God. I don't have any real defensive terrain back here. Got a little bit of wooded terrain over here. I don't want to move into this wood line because the enemy's already too close. Troops are already exhausted. but I will let them come to me and use my... What I don't have an advantage of is probably in terms of morale and in terms of firepower. Where I do have an advantage, if they come to me, is just artillery is freaking devastating in this game at close range. So you, we've got like three batteries here all firing on these boys. It looks like they're trying to get in close. Oh, nope, they stopped, and now they just got hit by canister and they're already routing. This unit's a toast. These guys are already pulling back too. Where are they retreating to? You can see there, I think they'll probably get completely destroyed. Or at least route off the map this way, maybe? But yeah, that, I guess that was an enemy, an enemy attempt to attack us. That didn't go very well for them. One regiment destroyed effectively, the others driven back. Can I not merge these two? 
I'm guessing you can't merge. Oh, they're retreating. Those bastards. I guess I was charging with very tired troops. Where is an Arnold anyway? Okay, over here. I'm so crammed in at the bottom of the map, I can't really... All right, they're gone. They, were, they either were destroyed or routed off the map. I'm not sure which, but... It's very difficult to see, though, right now, because everything is so cramped. But the enemy's moving artillery toward me? I guess? Let's concentrate our fire on these boys as they try and move. If we can destroy a battery, that would be great. Although, I think their artillery... I'm confused by what's happening here. I don't love that they're in so close, but I think the concentration of my artillery while also putting them under infantry fire will hopefully break these guys pretty quick. They're trying to flank me, but there's really nowhere to flank. So I do appreciate that the AI in this game does seem to prefer flank attacks. Like, that is a good thing. That is, that is sound AI logic. The problem with it is I think it takes it a little bit to an extreme where, like, they try and go up and around your army when there is no room for them to do that. Meanwhile, it looks like our, uh, our reinforcements, we had another regiment that was coming up, have arrived. Got another battery of artillery, too. But I think this battle's almost over. I think if we destroy these two units here, it'll be over. Again, we outnumbered the enemy considerably. You can see this red line up here, this pop sort of strength line, not in their favor. So they're routing. They're still technically on the map for the moment, but they'll be gone in a second. Jesus. Yeah, they're gone. All right, so I guess the battle's not over quite yet. Maybe we'll have to go up and try and take this enemy fort. Can I just shift control? Oh, you can't. It'd be nice if you could shift and just auto select everybody what i'd like to do is just have all artillery fire on this one enemy battery oh, there's some guns over here too and right, let's bring some of these boys up this hill some of these units have two stars of experience that's nice can i i, I can't give the division an upgrade of their skills. Benedict Arnold and his impetuous self will go with him. Given we already routed one of their batteries, I, I don't imagine they have a ton of artillery left. I guess we'll see. We don't have great visibility into this, this wood line, but Arnold will go with him. Generals can die, by the way. My character died once or twice. Not in this campaign, obviously, but when I was kind of dicking around between uh, early days when I was playing this for the first time. Everybody's concentrating their fire. You'd think their morale would be shit. There's, a, there's at least two more batteries. I see some guns back here. That doesn't bode well for my uh, for my advance on these guns. Hopefully, if I bring him under fire from like a thousand troops, 
There's some gunners who are moving around here too. That's the morale. 61, 90. They're in cover. Like, you'd think that would matter. One of those batteries isn't even set up yet. Actually, I think this battery doesn't even have their guns. I think they were routed off their guns earlier. I think that's the battery we destroyed as they tried to come south. I know usually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy artillery with, you know, musketry is not a good strategy. I am banking on the fact that my troops are in a wood line that that may turn out better. Also, the enemy is under heavy, heavy artillery fire. If that matters. It doesn't look like I'm losing too many men here. Yet, anyway. So these boys are routing. Holy hell. There they go. Be nice if I could take their guns. There was a previous battle where I could take their guns. I'm not sure why I can't now. Shift right. Benedict, get up there. Raise their morale. I suppose one alternative is just to charge everybody. I know I usually complain about the lack of melee ability, but I think if I charge all of their batteries at once, then maybe that... Oh, shit, they've got infantry back here. Well, that may not end well. But if I charge all their batteries at once, they can't concentrate their fire. Because they're only one battery. You know, they don't have any... Come on, Benedict. Those boys are already routing. It's because of the stupid infantry back in the fort. Interestingly, we drove them at least temporarily off their guns over here. I don't I don't know if they still have if they don't have sufficient manpower to man them. Their troops are coming out of the forts. So this one infantry unit's doing well they're not doing well, but they're not they're not running away like assholes. Now they are. Okay, well we at least bloodied their uh their artillery. And none of these units like routed from the map, so maybe we'll draw them down to our artillery. Let's do this. Yeah, they're they're gonna come after me now. Call it bait. We were just trying to bait them into coming after us. Now they can come toward our guns. Okay, so these men are back on their guns and firing. Apparently shooting into the ground in front of them by the looks of it. They're good. I've got a whole bunch of troops that haven't even fought yet. So this is like the vanguard of the vanguard that just engaged in that melee. We've got so many other troops down here. Well, frankly, I thought I had more, but whatever. why those guys can't merge but whatever so the enemy's coming at us now we've got artillery these two batteries of troops are just ma are just shooting like they don't have the manpower to man their guns line all right boys all right the troops that came for and back onto those guns got got routed off of them at 
this pro it looks like a Prussian flag. I know the Germ the Hessians are in this game, but All right, this regiment's in trouble. You can see we're just shredding these guys. Don't sit there in the open. All right, so we routed that unit. They're going to route from the map. This is this feels a victory. The enemy's going to route. All right. So the enemy lost 530 of their 1,300 men, so a little bit less than half their force. We only lost 381 men despite that bloody initial charge. And uh, we didn't lose any guns. They lost 9 of their 25. Um, in terms of destroyed companies, doesn't look like any. But some heavily damaged ones. There's a possibility maybe... One of the two regiments, depending on how those casualties are broken up, might end up surrendering on the campaign map. Well, I probably don't have the manpower to push them as hard as I would like. Can we... Come on, boys. Push forward. They're supposedly retreating. They're capturing the battlefield stuff now. Damn it. Meanwhile, my boys are up here capturing Montreal. Why can't I fight this? They're blazing away. Sea invasion. One of our spies has collected information about a large British force sailing for Fort George. They plan to land and raid the area loyal to our cause. Fort George. Where where is that again? Where the hell's Fort George? Is it up in Canada? Oh, it's over here. Well, I don't even have any troops there. So if they want to land an army up there, I don't care. All right. So we dro it looks like we drove that enemy regiment back shy of. Uh... So they're going to get driven down to Burlington. We're going to get a, a big, large enemy sort of force at Burlington probably Montreal is now ours so I probably get some reward for that please tell me there's yes there's provisions at Montreal so those boys aren't starving maybe they can send some provisions down to the boys at Chambly Montreal being captured gives me plus 25 reputation, 20,000 gold, and 30 furs. We're rich. I'm sure all that money will vanish in a day. Bayonet charge. I don't know if this is a good idea with no provisions. You can see my morale is tanking. I think we're going to lose that battle. Which is wild considering how heavily we outnumber them. There we go. They're routing. All right, so Jackson's going to retreat to Montreal, probably. Church will probably retreat down to Burlington. All right, British mobilization in Quebec. The British are sending reinforcements to protect the province of Quebec, commanded by General Johnny Burgoyne. Or 
is it Johnny Burgoyne? Hessian and Indian mercenaries. Okay. That's okay. We we knew we had to assume that was going to happen. Montreal, meanwhile, provisions, maybe some reinforcements. All right. We're going to pull McNair and, and Butcher back to Hubbardton so they can replenish. And then Benedict Arnold's going to stick in Chambly. So we have 1,100 troops at Montreal. We don't know what the enemy might be sending down the river toward us. Quebec is up here. We have 1,500 British troops, not really encircled, but kind of. Where are these guys? Aren't these supposed to be going to Hubberton? Are they not there yet? Um, I assume now that the weather is getting better, that provisions will start getting better. But that's not really borne out in what I can see at these other places. We have been making more provisions. So we've got sort of the agriculture here. We're working on a couple of places to get more. Actually, this is supposed to be a very rich region up here in Canada. Agriculture speaking. I don't know that it makes sense to build more there at the moment. How's some um, research going? Four days for recruitment of officers. One day on the Navy Department. So if we concentrate our force here, we should be able to overwhelm the troops at Burlington. We do have provisions at Chambly and Montreal. So those boys at least are not starving anymore. I don't have recruits that far north. Which is funny because like Hubberton, well, it had 800. Now it's down to 20. We got a thousand recruits at level, but no provisions for them. Boston has 1300, but again, no provisions. Hopefully that will get better soon. Those 20 furs also, that's worth a lot. So we got 20,000 in cash. But then if you go to furs here, we got 37 in, in stockpile right now. But if you were to sell 20 furs, that's eight grand. If you were to sell all 37 that we got, that's 12 grand. So even if this 26,000 goes away right quick, we'll have some cash that we can generate quickly. Also, if we sell the copper we have, that's another 3,000. So we've, we've got money right now. There's a thousand slaves. That was sla I don't think slavery was all that prevalent in Canada right now. I'm not saying there were none. I, I don't know, but I don't, I don't think it was quite like that. Meanwhile, how are we doing weapons wise? 1700 civilian mar muskets. 210 brown besses and 430 United States muskets, okay? We didn't capture any more six-pound field guns by the looks of it. You know what we could do with our, with our money? We could buy a sloop of war. It's eight grand. There's one in the marketplace. Does it come equipped with guns or just the ship? Because if I could put it at Newport, I could build a little flotilla here. Not that I'd be able to sweep the seas clean of the British Navy or anything, but... I'd be able to do something. I'm a little uneasy about raising more troops in Boston just because like there's the whole, you know, the weird thing about this is it's like, oh, you've got no provisions and your men are starving, right? But it, I mean, maybe they're deserting and just recruits are replacing them, but they're all at full strength pretty much. So that's strange. Let's actually raise our infantry regiment at Boston. Got a couple of officers. Daniel Morgan's not commanding his rifles? Did they get destroyed or something? Anyway, let's go ahead and raise... Actually, let's change their weapon. Let's give them... Uh, let's give them the United States. So 
So we're going to do, ah, got to do that again. I clicked off. Fusiliers with United States. Fusiliers with United States. We'll change that because they're going to need some replacement weapons for their casualties. So we'll do a brown best one. I guess we'll do a uh, civilian musket one. Supply stretchers and artillery. We don't have enough of anything except for the three pound gallopers, so they're going to go with that. So we'll raise a regiment here at Boston. A nice regular regiment. Take advantage of that huge stockpile of reserves. We can always move them up to Hubberton to join Butcher for the assault on Burlington. I'm assuming Burlington's supply situation is dire because while we do have a supply line north for all the cities we took, Burlington is now isolated. There is no line of supply to it. I'm going to take a moment to let these guys rest. Apparently, we did we do have some recruits in some of these towns. And we're going to make Montreal and, I believe, priority destinations. We're going to turn off the priority for Ticonderoga as it's, it's just not a priority, and neither is Saratoga. We don't have any units there that need a priority. We'll also make Hubberton a priority. Do I need do I need to turn off any of these others? Providence is a is a is a set a capital. I guess I can't change that. It is it is considered a priority no matter what. And then certainly Boston. I can't doesn't look like I can turn over off Hartford either. Oh, but we can upgrade some of these. So we can upgrade the blacksmith's house. We can upgrade the the horse pasture. We'll do the horse pasture. So what else would I build in New Haven? I can get recruits. I really just want to... I, I need better production options, really. I don't want to spend all the money. I don't want to be, like, crazy about it. Fur trader houses are nice. You only start with the U.S. with a couple of locations where you have them. But where you do have them, it's real nice. They can't go directly to Champlain. So I think I can pull this regiment here and move them north to St. John's. Because they can't move directly through this lake toward me. They've got to move around it, which means they've either got to break through at Hubberton or St. John's. So I'll move these 450 men north. And let's get let's get these boys going. I'm hopeful now that it looks like the snow is gone that we'll start seeing some provisions being produced. Nearest capital. Part of the problem maybe with some of these areas is they're also pretty far away from any. So all those recruits that I was sending Herkmeyer there to use are gone. Continental Navy, yeah, okay, so Naval Department is opened. St. John's. All right, so it looks like we're consuming the supplies at Montreal and Chambly, but I, I don't see it being produced. Although it looks like there's some supply being produced at Frederick. So maybe supply is starting to slowly return. Maybe. The 
Didn't I tell them to go into the garrison there? Okay. Okay. So we've got 17, 18, 26. So we've got 2,700 troops under Benedict Arnold up here in the sort of Montreal area. Burlington's not a fort, so we could certainly assault it. We do have a, a naval HQ now. So I need to assign someone to be the department, to be the head of the Navy. Noah May, Bowles Glen, or Bettenham Fitzpatrick are my options. We'll go with Fitzpatrick. What do, what do I do if I if I start doing shipyards? Can I can I start building ships? Uh, research speed, that's my only research option for him. Go back to working on Dragoons for my, my main guy. Two more days for low-ranking officers, which I badly need. Let's also crank up... I don't know what Shipyards does. So, like, if I, if I put two there and I go into... Production management. I go to ships. What can I build? I can build an unrated cutter. That's it. Can I have up to 12 guns? It's 4,000 gold. Okay. That's not going to be enough to sweep the lanes clear. So let's hold off on doing that for now. I could probably sell them for a nice tidy profit, actually. Just like I do kind of with the rifles from time to time, but let's increase our uh, rifle production to max for now. 11 factories for sort of land lubber production. That'll increase. So we're going to also reduce civilian musket production. We will max out. Oh, that's not really what I wanted. All right. That's what we'll do. Civilian muskets, I would like to phase out entirely for the United States muskets. But for the moment, we'll keep that as it, like that. I might want to start building guns. I've got enough right now, but... All right, let's move forward a couple days. I'm hoping, like, soon, some supply production. You can see a little bit of trade and wagons going back and forth between these towns. Is Hubbardton getting anything? So warehouses inc increase capacity, but again, I have no sign. So some provisions are showing up at, at Albany, Saratoga. So, I mean, maybe, yep, provisions just showed at Hubberton. So I do think actually supply is starting to get better. We'll need to give it a little bit of time probably, although I think some of these regiments drew some provisions while they were, when they showed up at these places. Yeah, they've got provisions now, so they've at least got something. Not enough wagons. Can I buy any wagons on the market? No. Great. Um, maybe that's what we need to build. A wagon factory. How do I do that? Do I go to... There we go. Let's build some wagons. All right, so we'll add wagons to our production queue. All the factories are leased out. So we will up priority to wagons. I don't need six per day. That's That's more than I need. Three per day still seems... I don't think I need anywhere near that money. I mean, I mean, I'm guessing I can sell them, but let's just stick to a day. It should be enough. They're, they're also not cheap. And they consume quite a few horses, and I am not producing enough horses. Remember, I sold, like, all my horses. So I have, like, no horses. I can buy some. They're not that expensive. So let's buy 16. 
for 800 bucks. Now that I'm no longer selling everything off. Okay. Um, I don't know how long I'll be able to, to build those. Things. Am I really only making 30 per day? Can I increase that? All right, we'll make 30 civilian muskets a day, 43 United States muskets, and two wagons. I Meanwhile, headquarters, I need to do some research for the chief engineer. There aren't any other real options, so go back to qualified engineers, which opens up Fur Factory, which will allow me to increase fur production, rum factory, and cigar factory. 29 days on each of those. We also still have 168 days left to take Quebec. First things first is I want to I want to reduce Burlington. But we're going to wait. Let's wait three days and see. Like I don't know if any reinforcements will come north for some of these guys. I'm hopeful that they do. And I guess we could, we've raised this regular unit here, pretty much. Let's go ahead and have them leave the garrison at uh, Boston and go join Butcher at Hubberton. You know, I'll take, I'll take any donation. I, I thought maybe I was getting those donation triggers because I was doing so poorly that the game was like, here's money to keep you afloat. But it, they still seem to be coming in, so maybe that's not the issue. Maybe it's just that uh, that the game triggers a lot of free money for you. Halifax Resolves. The North Carolina Provisional Con Congress adopts the Halifax Resolves. Encouraging delegates to the Continental Congress from all of the colonies to finally push for independence. Plus 20% recruits for 30 days in New Hampshire. Okay. Aren't, isn't one of the things I'm working on going to give me Henry Knox? Yeah, Henry Knox. If we can get... So the other thing is, like, I'd be tempted to push the British on Salem. Like, it feels like I'm starting to get into a position where maybe I've got enough manpower to do that, but... I think what I what I really need is I need Do any of these guys get enough experience so that they can upgrade? It's weird that the divisions say that they've got enough experience so that I can upgrade them when like these regiments don't. I feel like this must still be a work in progress, is sort of the way the experience works. All right, are we gonna get more recruits here? We are. Okay, Hoverton's getting some recruits. Some provisions are also flowing through there. Ammo's flowing north to Fort St. John's, and some provisions are sort of slowly coming that way. We don't have enough officers, nowhere near enough officers right now, which is kind of holding us back. Um, when do I get more officers? Samson Byrne is apparently a... How is he that good? What is that, that trait? 109? He could use a portrait. Uh, yeah, I could probably pay more for bounties. But I don't know that... This is just recruits. It doesn't affect... I mean, it's not like my financial problems are magically solved. I've got... Fort Lovell is a thousand troops. All right, we'll raise one more, one more regiment. I have... I do... It looks like I still have the guns to do it.
I don't have the officers. Damn it. We have the men. We don't have the officers. Go here. Go to Fort Lovell. Like, I was trying to get her or whatever re-equipped. We have no food. Do, 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 do. do I have the option to do? Okay. 20 low-ranking officers. Navy dude, you do it. You know what? Just, just buy him right away. Just instantly. I've got the prestige. I got, what, 25 for the victory there or for taking Montreal? Okay. Uh, Hubberton, Daniel Morgan of Hubberton has been killed. No, they killed Daniel Morgan. The second he arrived, he got killed by a sniper. The fuck? Dude's a good one. That sucks. Meanwhile, we got the 20 officers and they're pretty much all gone right away. I think they came in right away, right? Yeah, looks like it. They all got consumed like instantly. Although the good news is a lot of those officers are being consumed by the forces in Canada under Benedict Arnold who badly need reinforcements. Uh, Massachusetts Bay is not very loyal, so we're not going to confiscate the cargo there. And there goes all of our officers. These boys really should have been on priority one. Okay. Not enough officers. All right. So the two militia companies at Fort John, St. John's are at full strength. The regulars at Montreal and the first are, are look like they're basically at full strength. Almost ish. Militia units are a little bit weaker. One of the regular units at, Chambly looks like it's mostly at full strength, but we're basically, we went from what? 2,700 troops a couple days ago to now 25, 3,400 troops between these three cities. Plus another 1,800 down here at Lovell and Hubberton. We've got basically a full strength, brand new regiment under Matthias, not a wink. So I think what we may do is we'll bring Butcher North with these thousand men, I'll probably also slide in the, I don't know if we'll do the 270 regulars or if we'll slide the militia over, but probably go north with about 13 to 1500 troops. We'll bring in the 900 from St. John's and then maybe a regiment or two from Chambly and Benedict Arnold and the butcher will meet. We'll take Burlington and then with five months left, we will begin working our way north toward Quebec it does look like provisions now that we are in the campaigning season are slowly getting better. You can see Fort Frederick has five. Lovell has one. Stevens has seven. Boston now has nine. So we are making progress there. But that'll be for another time. We've been going for almost an hour here. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. It does feel like we have made progress. We took Montreal basically unopposed, fought a battle at Chamoli, took St. John's, and uh, kind of almost surrounded 1,500 British troops here. So that's where we'll pick things up next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out. Bye-bye now.